All right, we got half the conference at the pool, half the half the conference here for my talk. So fire that way up. And no, I really appreciate you guys uh, being here. There's a lot going on this week. Show of hands, you guys having a great time getting a lot of information that you did not know about. Good. That's why you guys show up at these things to learn what we don't know that we don't know, and also meet new, uh, interesting, and uh, people within our space on here. So thank you. There's a lot of places you could be right now, like the Lazy River or the bar or the Liverpool game. I just learned about on here. So thanks for taking some time uh, and making it a priority to be here. It is my hope that you're leaving with at least one or two things that you did not know about what's possible with maximizing your podcast content. So um, for the past seven years, I've had the unique pleasure of being able to help people become who they need to be underneath the podcasting umbrella. It goes a little bit further than that is that I firmly believe that podcasting will in fact change your life and your business if you let it. I say that in confidence because I've lived the past 12 years of my life building my brand and my company brand simultaneously. And the only way I would have done that is by interviewing people. I just I thought I changed the slide real quick there. I have to push the button for that. Uh, the only way I would have been able to do that and get access to people that were like, why would they want to talk to somebody that's just getting started? Well, I used to wear bow ties. I've since retired the bow tie. And I used to run around everywhere with a camera. Everyone lets the guy with a bow tie and a camera in. Everybody. In addition to that, when I met the person, I would connect. I'd say, hey, I'd love to get to know you better. Let's get you on the podcast. I'd love to tell your story. No one says no to that. No one. So what does that mean for podcasting as a tool? It's our access point, it's our access key, it's our foot in the door, if you will. So today I wanna to talk to you about how starting a podcast, even if you already have one, can solve all of your social media content problems. By show of hands, who has an active podcast in here? All right, cool, we're at a podcast conference, kinda of makes sense. How many people wanna start a podcast? All right, fantastic. So this talk is for everybody, because if you've already got one, it's time to up your game up a little bit. And if you don't have one, this is, this is my strong recommendation on what you can do moving forward to maximize the experience that you're having as a podcaster, but also grow the show, increase your business, and all the other ancillary things that come along with launching a podcast. But for a minute, I just wanna stop for a second and just think for a, a half a second, what's possible if we just thought for a minute and just imagined, what does it look like to start doing more that we're currently doing right now with our podcast? What do you mean by that, Sebastian? I'm recording episodes, I'm putting episodes up. What more do you want from me? More. Why? Because a podcast is extremely hard to market. Would everyone agree with that? Not the easiest thing to market. You got a link and you got an image. So you gotta get real creative. But technology affords us the opportunity now. 98% of podcasts are recorded remotely, so we've got an archived video and an archived audio piece that we don't just haphazardly upload to YouTube and post and pray because Justin Bieber got discovered that way. We wanna be more strategic with that. So today, I wanna to go through some things that I've learned that we help folks do, um, in addition to, to the shows that I host, uh, to really maximize the exposure of each episode. But more importantly, how many people would say that their social media content game is absolutely on point and you guys are firing on all cylinders? Yeah, I'm not raising my hand either because there are some areas that can, that can constantly improve. But I firmly believe that if it starts with content, which you've already got a bulk content solution in your hands once you've already recorded a podcast episode, what you do with that after that, entirely up to you. That's what we're gonna learn about today. Sound good? Say yes or yes. All right, excellent, here we go. So what's possible? I don't know, I learned a long time ago that anything's possible, but only 100% of the time. So what, when you think about what's possible with your show, I wanna challenge your thought process, process a little bit today, and that maybe the goals and ambitions that you have for your podcast are a little bit smaller than they should be. And I'm not here to tell you how to set goals, and we're not here to do a whole woo-woo session, but some of us need a little woo-woo every now and then. So I'm gonna weave that into the stuff that I'm teaching here, because podcast is a lot like life, and life's a lot like podcasting. Would everyone agree with that? All right, cool, so what's possible? I don't know, it's for, your, it's for you to figure out, but I'm telling you, anything is possible, but only 100% of the time. New business, more exposure, consistent content, new relationships. That's what I've lived for the past 12 years of my life, seven years specifically with podcasting. New business, more exposure, consistent content, new relationships. That's what I've literally lived, and it's what we teach to the folks that we have the opportunity to serve uh, within the world of getting a podcast started and supporting them ongoing. 
oh, why do I even care about this? I don't know, that's for you to figure out too. I can't figure out your why for you. That's a big life question too. Why, why am I here? What am I doing? What is my purpose? That's a, that's, a, that's a one player game for you to go and figure out. But what I have learned is for a long time it took me to figure out what my why was. No one, I, I learned just that. No one can do it for me. I've got to figure this whole why thing out. Why do you do what you do? My favorite quote, Simon Sinek talks a lot about why. Correct. If you're a Simon fan, you've probably, you probably already know that. But one of the quotes that really stands out um, that you've probably heard before that Simon said, and that is, people don't care what you do, they care why you do it. And that really makes sense. That really resonate, resonated with me when I first heard that. But why? I don't know. I have no idea. That's your job to figure out. It took me a long time to figure it out. But today, before we get started, I want to remind everybody, yes, you can, okay? That's the woo-woo part of the talk. Yes, you can. And I am deeply passionate about reminding people of this fact that you can, because here's the deal. Somewhere along the line, somebody told us that we couldn't do something. We believed them. And not only did we believe them, we carried that belief with us our entire life. The good news is it can change today, but it's a personal decision. It's somebody saying, hey, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, what that person had to say about me wasn't true. Maybe that person told me I couldn't do something because they in fact believed themselves that they couldn't do a specific thing. So today, I just want to remind everybody, I remind myself every single day as I look in the mirror, Sebastian, yes, you can. I just want to give everybody permission to do whatever you need to do to get wherever it is that you want to go with your business, your life, your passion, and the content that you're creating. Fair enough? All right, excellent. So, um, just some basic reasons. Sometimes people ask me, why do I want to start a podcast? I probably field this question three, four, five, six, seven times a day. Um, so I just want to quickly recap. We're not here to talk about how to start a podcast. Most of us already know how to do that because we do have a podcast. But let's just do a quick recap, if you will. Why should you start a podcast? First and foremost, to tell your story. Next is you want to be able to have the opportunity to serve people and your community. Podcasting allows you to do that. There is not a better relationship tool on the planet than a podcast. Not one. We talked about that a couple of minutes ago. It's great to meet you. We'd love to have you on the podcast and tell your story. No one says no to that. If they do, stay away from them. To create a platform to serve and connect and to become a media company as a brand. Sebastian, media company, what are we talking about here? Well, yeah, so we create a podcast platform, which is your platform. You're creating content. You're providing value. And then you start to monetize that content and that community through whatever means you see fit. Maybe it's a sponsorship. We use I use it a lot for to, to scale our agency. I find interesting people up to really cool things. No podcast. I'd love to connect further with you and get to know you and tell your story. We get done with the conversation. I go, when do you start a podcast? You know, it's been on my list. I just don't have time. I don't want to figure it all out. I would like, can you help? I actually can. Let's schedule a call. I can't even tell you how many agency clients I convert over podcast interviews because I'm strategic about how I want to monetize my podcast. I don't want to go after sponsors unless they come after me because I don't want to prove every single month how cool I am. Downloads dip a little bit. Well, what had happened was downloads are up. You're the greatest thing in the world. You have to constantly, and that is that world of here's how cool I am. There's a better way. Strategic interviews, great way to be able to do it. Finding your why. So I told you I can't give you your why. I can give you a quick exercise real quick. And this is what I ran through too. And it took me a long time asking myself these questions every single day. And I still came up with a blank answer. If I had my dream business, I would be doing, I feel most fulfilled when I do. And my deepest desire is to, so let's add lib real quick and walk you through what it kind of looks like. I'll answer the questions. If I had my dream business, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing right now, helping marketers, entrepreneurs, and business owners become the best versions of themselves to best serve their community through means of starting a podcast. Podcasting is the catalyst, me being able to help people understand what's possible and reveal blind spots, what they may or may not have seen. That's the real gift that I have. I feel most fulfilled when I do exactly what I want to do, when I want to do it. I think that's the true definition of freedom. 
A lot of us out there, I don't believe in the hustle culture and the grind and I got to work eight days a week and all of that's nonsense. What you have to do is have a purpose in, of, of serving people and know why you're actually doing that. And my deepest desire really is to see people go from where they currently are to where they want to be. And thank God I'm able to experience that on a daily basis and on a weekly basis with the work that we are doing. Because I get people that are all in the inner critics and overdrive. You're gonna sound like crap. You're gonna look like crap. Nobody's gonna listen. You don't have a voice like Sebastian. What are you doing podcasting? These are all things that we have to silence right out of the gate. I'm not saying I have a great voice, but people tell me that I do. I have a great face for radio. And that's not even a thing anymore. Well, it is, but it isn't. Sorry, radio people, if you're in the house here. So, marketing a podcast is not an easy task, but I just wanted to give just one, some, just some quick pointers on what I've experienced on being able to really maximize as much as you possibly can marketing your podcast. First, being a guest on other podcasts. What does that do? Well, you're telling your story, you're connected with an audience you're not currently connected to, and you also have the opportunity to gain some exposure through that show, and guess what? At the end, Sebastian, where's the best place to find you? You know what? I hang out a lot on Twitter and on LinkedIn. The best thing to do is go to my Instagram, Podcast Launch Guy, Hit the link tree, you can connect with me wherever you see fit. Um, creating micro content, we're gonna get into that right now. That's what this talk's all about. How do I do that, Sebastian? You're probably familiar with some of the tools. We're just not doing it. And I found myself for a long time talking about what I should be doing uh, and not doing it. Tony Robbins says, I, I hear people, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. They find themselves shooting all over themselves. So if you have that should the conversation with yourself, knock it off. The time is now and ask yourself, what are you missing out on? But more importantly, who's missing out on you because you're not showing up when it comes to being able to maximize the exposure through your content. So creating micro content, your guests sharing the fact that they're on your show and talking about you and getting real strategic with your guests to say, hey, listen, do you mind sharing the episode? Everyone says yes, everybody says yes. So ask it again after they say, no, 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 I've, seriously, after the episode drops, will you share it with your network? Because I have a lot of people tell me they're gonna share it and guess what, they don't share it. So you want to be able to make sure you can get as least as much of a verbal commitment as possible from people. Um, you know, the 80-20 rule, you know, it's, it's, it's a push-pull program when it comes to marketing. 80% of the pulling that you're doing is that you're trying to pull people in to listen to your show. The 20% push is that you're, you're pushing your message out to get people to go and listen to it. So what else is possible? We talked a little bit about marketing. We talked about why you would actually have a podcast in case you didn't already know. But what else is possible? And I also want to ask an additional question on top of this. What are you waiting for? The time is right now. We are not guaranteed the next couple of minutes, the next 30 seconds. Life does not operate like that. The time is now. Time is of the essence. And again, I continue to re-anchor myself back in that question constantly, Sebastian. Who's missing out because you're not showing up? in whatever capacity that is. And that leaves me with a really, really empty, weird feeling that I don't like at all. So the best way to avoid that is just to do the work, is to do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. But what else is possible if we say, you know what, I'm gonna take on a new way of thinking about my podcast, a new, a new approach to my podcast, because I know there's more available. I know that if I do more, more is gonna show up. And I know there's more possible. I don't know what that possible is yet, but we're gonna figure it out. I just believe that it's possible. That's the, that's the important part, the belief system. We tend to forget about the belief system, believing in that it's possible, believing in what we're doing um, in business. We, we go through those motions, but really believing in, anchoring it, and think, what does it feel like for this to actually happen? Stuff works, low woo woo, this is the woo woo part of the talk. So solve all of your social media content problems um, with your podcast, let's dive in. So repurpose your podcast. In my experience, the best way to create micro content for your podcast is through micro videos. Those are little 30 second, 60 second clips that can go on TikTok, can go on Instagram stories, can go on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram as an actual video. We like to do 60 second video clips of the episode with a real nugget from the, from the episode with a catchy title that, people will, um, that, that will, people will want to listen to, that attracts, may not be the title of your episode. Uh, graphics, everybody's heard of Canva, turned the world into a graphic designer. Canva has a plethora of templates available that you can plug your existing branding, brand kit, whatever you're doing for your show, directly into um, Canva and create some you know, 
content at almost lightning speed. And then blog posts too, very old school, but blog posts are still happening. So if you've got a website and you've got a blog on it, taking your podcast, transcribing that podcast, getting a copywriter to make sense of the transcription, very important, make sense of the transcription. We can't just copy and paste and hope we've got a blog post. And then maybe putting the player for your podcast episode on that blog post to listen to that specific episode um, can be very effective and have some ongoing SEO benefits as well as far as indexing the content and your thing and what you talk about. So th when we talk about repurposing a podcast, I hear too, too much noise, <laughs> I don't say, dare I call it conversation, too much noise around the fact of people saying, well, we have a YouTube video that we do once a week, and then we take that YouTube video, and we pull the audio off it, turn it into a podcast. And I'm like, that's all you do? They're like, yeah. I'm like, have you listened to it? <laughs> have you actually listened to it to make sure that like, because a YouTube video doesn't sound like a podcast. I don't know if anybody's watched YouTube videos or not, but it's usually like, have you wondered why you haven't been able to do this? Well, if so, you're in the right place. Stick around, because in this video, I'm gonna explain why you should be doing this. Could you imagine a podcast episode starting like that? I mean, I guess technically it could, but those things need to kind of match up a little bit. That's why I would say, let's just throw the brakes on a little bit when it comes to taking the audio and the video archive and just slapping it up somewhere, calling it a podcast and calling it a YouTube strategy. Because those two things really work against each other and it's a waste of time. So if you're taking your podcast video and uploading it to YouTube, because I mean, you never know, right? That's what we call post and pray. And it just doesn't work. It can, sure, absolutely. But if you're spending a majority of your time doing it and not getting any results, ding, 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 that's probably why. Micro videos, this is the greatest example of micro videos that we do. The one on the left here is for my show, the one on the right is for a client of our agency. And what we do is we go, actually they're both clients. So this client was on another client's, in my mastermind. So we have a lot of agency clients that derived out of our mastermind group, but those are both clients actually. She was a guest, there's a new show that we're just now launching with an existing show that we launched earlier this year, but it's a clip. Always work on your money mindset. She's a money coach, she's a CPA, that's her jam, is to help you maximize tax benefits and maximize your money. Her podcast is launching real soon, it's called Life Changing Money, and she interviews millionaires and billionaires that, and tells their story of that transition into, I barely got by, I made a decent living to, I'm ridiculously successful now. So really cool to see that. I didn't even recognize when I put these slides together that it was both of them. But this is a great example of a micro video. So what we do, my team goes in and we create a template in Canva for just the square and everything's the same. So the title could be the same, the, all that stuff can remain the same and the only thing we're swapping out is the name of the, or the, the, little, the catchy little title of the, of the podcast episode and the guest name. Beyond the Story stays the same, Never Stop Building stays the same, Listen on Apple, Spotify, etc. stays the same. So the thing we're doing, so that's just a square template that's created. My team goes and creates three to four templates per client. So we get every, for, we do four episodes a month. Every episode has a different template that we use. It allows you to streamline it a lot more. Uh, actually, let me go back. Kapwing is what we use a majority of these for. Not a video editor. We use Kapwing. It's like 20 bucks a month and it's a web-based video editor and it's outstanding. It allows you to um, pull a video in, throw an image on top of it, all anything you would want to do in a video editor, but it's an online web-based video editor for 20 bucks a month. I mean, I don't know where this was when I was you know, spending, burning the midnight oil on iMovie, like, beat me up, Scotty. Um, but Kapwig, Kapwing, Kapwig, I don't know. That's the, that's the name of it right down there in the, bo the bottom left-hand corner. If you send me a DM, I'll send you a link to it. Audiograms, so uh, same thing, we create templates. So this is a template right here. NFT suck, if you don't understand them, one of my most recent shows that I host on Twitter Spaces. Um, that's me, the Simpsons version. They're like, that's the Simpsons version? I thought that was actually you. Uh, and then my guest, so the topic, and um, the guest name and his picture, and this, we, we host it live on Twitter Spaces, so this is more of a promotional flyer, but could it, be, it could be utilized as an audiogram image. Uh, same thing over here with the Grit Daily Startup Podcast. Uh, Grit Daily is a, a, a media outlet out of New York that I got the privilege of hosting the show for, and um, the bottom part is all template-based. The whole thing is template-based, and we swap it out with the title, episode number, guest picture, and of course, um, my mug stays the same there on the bottom with the whole setting up. But as you can see, these are just simple Canva designs with existing logos that are on there. So we're not racking our brains. I have a very talented theme, thank God. I wouldn't be able to pull this type of stuff off. I'd like to think that I could. I used to do the stuff, but it's night and day compared to, to what they do, thankfully, and, I, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. But it's not a lot. When you look at the design, 
We're picking a couple colors. We're picking a couple fonts. We're looking at a layout, making sure everything's even in Canva. They got those little pink and purple lines that make sure that you're leveling everything out correctly. It's almost effortless. Like they make it really easy to become a video editor or or a uh, or a graphic designer. Now, don't try and figure this all out and get frustrated. Like oh, I've just been all weekend figuring out Canva because that podcast sucks guy told me I needed to. That's not it at all. Listen, if you don't like doing it and you hate it, find somebody that can. You're going to make more. Well, I'm not making money yet. You'll make more money by delegating it before you're making money and by sitting there spending your entire weekend and frustrated. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd rather wake up in the morning, punch myself in the face and eat my pillow than edit anything, podcast, video, etc. But I have people on my team that love it. They love it. And that's, the, that's, that's one of the hacks of life and business is being able to delegate the tasks you hate. Firing yourself from every task that you shouldn't be doing, especially the ones that you hate. Images. Canva. Going back to Canva. It's all template based here. So Instagram story template on here. We got the show branding here on the left. We've got the guest name, the episode number. You have to fix yourself first. I don't know what the title of the episode was, but it probably has to do something with personal development and fixing yourself and figuring those things out. Uh, and then we have, this, this, this is when I, you notice the difference? This is when I was doing the graphics a couple of years ago on here. Still not that bad, but my team is exponentially better at what they're doing here. But what I did was just swap everything out. I have the client or the guest logo, their picture, their name, um, and, uh, and their title, along with the episode number and how to become a prof professional speaker. That's my buddy, Zach Nadler. Zach Nadler was Gary Vaynerchuk's agent for numerous years until he teamed up and started Vayner Speakers, and he still manages all of Gary's speaking business, but it was really fun to tell the story of how that all came together when Gary became a speaker in 2009, uh, when no one knew who he was, and he was with CAA, Creative Artists, which is the biggest talent agency on the planet, and they didn't know what to do with him. They're like, we have Oprah, and like Lauren Obama, and then we have Gary, who drinks wine on TV and cusses at people. So it's kind of fun to tell that story. Anyway, fun fact. All done through Canva, all template based. Once you got the template done, you're just filling in the blanks. And then you also want to mix that template up a little bit different fonts, different layouts, etc. And like I said, our team does three to five templates per client so that we've got a library. So when it's time to go, okay, episode one, two, three, and four, they're not all the same. If they are, not a big deal, but it's more fun to have a variety of things. Plus your content aesthetically looks like, wow, they're creating a lot of different content, even though it's really the same thing. Blog post, otter.ai is what I use for transcription. Fantastic service. I go in there and just upload every episode and transcribe it and copy and paste the transcription into the transcription uh, space in my podcast hosting account. I use Simplecast because it's simple. And there's a, uh, there's a transcript space where you copy and paste it in there. And we talked earlier, um, what you could do is you could have technically have a copywriter go through there and extract some nuggets out of the transcription, make sense of it, write a blog post, um, and then uh, include the podcast episode and any keywords. And if you're into the whole blog game, you know, that's your jam. Jarvis, that's not the name of the company anymore. I just learned like a few minutes ago, my buddy Travis told me that uh, Jarvis is no longer because they got sued for copyright, so they're under a different name. But anyway, it's AI um, copywriting. So headlines, YouTube titles, blog posts, instead of sitting there staring at a blank cursor, Jarvis goes in there and lets the robots go to work. And you type in a couple of keywords and it spits back, you know, some sort of blurb or whatever you're looking for. It's like, what do you look for? A blog post, a YouTube title, etc. So not the cheapest tool on the planet, but one of a kind. I haven't seen any AI platforms going, they're going to write for you, like write a blog post, like a, a robot's going to write for me. Like, where do I sign? And then after that's done, you're scheduling it or, 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 or delegating a time. If you're, if you're just getting started and you're like, listen, I want to learn the process so I can teach the process. Perfect. Let's pick one day to create the content, one day to schedule the content, and let's move on with the rest of our lives. Deal? Because otherwise we get sucked into this, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I've heard people be at conferences before and go, I gotta go back up to my room to create content. And I'm like, I'm sorry, come again? You're here for three days to learn what you don't know that you don't know and build new relationships and you're going back up to your room to create content? Shame on you. Again, who's missing out because you're up in your room screwing around with Hootsuite? It's a great question to ask ourselves. It always starts with telling ourselves the truth. We always start there.
a lot of freedom on that side. But as you can see, lots of familiar tools here that you see, Hootsuite. Uh, we don't do a lot of scheduling. We do a lot of stuff in real time. I'd say the only thing we schedule out are podcast episodes, which is a great hack, because if you bulk record and you've got five or six episodes ready to go in the hopper, scheduling all of those out and being done with it uh, is, a, is a real, is a real uh, great hack as well. So how do I do all this, Sebastian? How do I create all this stuff? How do I do all this? And this is by no means a sales pitch by any stretch of imagination. They said we weren't allowed to do that. I don't do that anyway. I firmly believe that if you deliver value and people resonate with you, they're gonna hunt you down and find you if they're gonna do business with you. And if not, well, that's cool too. But there's two options to get this done. You can do it yourself, totally doable. I've done it before. I just prefer not to do it anymore. I know I've experienced the freedom that's available from not doing it. I no longer have to do that anymore. The freedom that I know I wake up every single day and I'm like, we do 50 to 70 episodes a month at the agency and I wouldn't even know where to start with editing. I wouldn't even know. If I didn't check our project management software, I'd be clueless. Or you can hire an expert. There's tons of them out there. There are a dime a dozen. Find somebody who resonates with you. But if you're going to do this, get some examples of the work that they've actually done. Don't just take somebody's word for it. One of my favorite things to do is if what you say is true, create me a couple of pieces of content. I want to see what your work's all about. Some examples might not always justify the work they can possibly do for your brand. So you want to make sure that they can do the random, you know, especially when it comes to this type of stuff. Show me some of your work. In fact, most people, if they're, if they're doing it right, will say, hey, I'll create a piece of content for you. I know I, I did that for a long time. That was a great strategy. Hey, I'll give you a free video. Just tell everybody about it. And after you do that, um, nine times out of ten, they're like, I like that video. And so did other people. How do we do this every single month? And that video is an example. Whatever your thing is or whatever you offer. But make sure you're vetting the people that you're doing. Well, there's a lot of experts out there. A lot of experts out there. So you want to make sure you're screening people to know exactly who you're doing business with to maximize um, the, you know, the opportunity at hand. By the way, that QR code goes right to my calendar. If anybody has any questions or anything, it looks like a sales page. It, kind of technically is, but it's more my calendar than anything on there. I get your email, and if you never want to talk to me ever again, just hit the unsubscribe button. But if you do want to talk to me, it brings you right to my calendar, and you'll be able to schedule a time. I'd love to talk to anybody for 10 or 15 minutes about whatever it is that pertains to your podcasting game. It is my mission, and it is my life's work to make sure that everybody that I come in contact with is impacted for the better when it comes to taking their podcast to the next level, when it comes to making sure they really understand what's possible in this whole world of podcasting. So with that said, I really appreciate